And welcome back, Gems, to another wonderful episode of the Grateful Gem Podcast. I am your host, Jasmine Chanel, and today we are talking about being a conqueror because you are different. Stick around because gems are definitely about to be dropped and you don't want to miss out on this information. So let's go. <laughs> I need everyone listening to this podcast episode to follow us on Instagram at the Grateful Gym Pod and also follow me at Jasmine Chanel. Don't worry, I spelled everything out and left it in the notes below. Take a look. See you there. Now let's get into this episode. What's going on, Gems? I'm so excited that I am here sticking to my word (laughs) of what I said, trying to make sure that I continuously stay on track, keeping you guys informed, keeping you guys uplifted um, through what it is that God has called me to reveal to you guys. Um, I'm super excited about today's episode because again, as you guys know, this is currently what I'm going through and I know that I can't be the only one going through this. So I want to make sure that if you're going through this as well, that you have the resources and the information and the word that God has sent to me to give to you because, um, it's very important to make sure that your mindset is in a great place. Um, Even when you feel like you've been overcome, even when you feel like you're tired, you're frustrated. And to be honest, that's where I am this morning. Um, I woke up or this afternoon, (laughs) I woke up earlier today and, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm frustrated. You know, I'm exhausted. I feel like I've been conquered and I'm not a conqueror. And I feel like I've let mountains in front of me, um, continue to build. When when we know that in the word, it doesn't say that a mountain will get bigger, but it does say that if you have faith of a mustard seed, that you will be able to move those mountains. And I guess because I haven't had enough faith and I haven't had enough courage and I haven't had enough of confidence in myself to be able to move that mountain, I feel as though the mountain has gotten bigger and greater in size, even though in reality, it's the same size. So today I just want to talk about, um, from a place, not about (laughs) today, I want to talk from a place of that topic. Um, as you heard, the topic is you are in a conqueror because you are different. And sometimes we realize this, but we don't really understand what that exactly means. So today I want to help you guys understand what I'm saying. Um, because I have a few other episodes that I've talked about where I've tried to fit in, um, where I've tried to be true to someone else calling or not calling, but be true to someone else's beliefs over my life, rather than the beliefs that God had for me. And in doing that, um, we steer away from God Uh, We pull away from ourselves and we become insecure. We become lean on our own understanding and not God's word and not God's understanding. And I'm not going to sit here and say because you're different that you're better because we are not better than anyone. We are all God looks at us in the same eye. He values and loves all of us very equally. His love is always unconditional. Even though our journey and our walks down this same path, to be honest, is very different because you are different. I'm different. And so when you realize that you're different, um, you realize that you can't do or say or go a lot of places or do things that other people do. And it took me learning this when I was in probably high school. I would say, yeah, high school. Um, I learned this in high school. I realized that I was I was caught to be let down a different path. So I never really engaged in a lot of things that other teenagers my age, young adults my age wanted to do. So, but I never felt like I was missing out. And if I did do something that was really like against what I normally do, it was because I wanted to, you know, make the other person feel happy or, you know, just step out of my comfort zone. Excuse me. Um, But we don't realize that when we step out of our own comfort zone into another zone that God had never ordained us to go into, it then creates a different mindset in us. Um, you know, we look at these and then it's just like, you know, you didn't usually want to do this, but now because you've done it and they're continuously able to do it, you want to do it all the time. And it's like, you don't even really want to do it, but you want to do it because you feel like 
you can, but in all reality, you know that, okay, this isn't me. This isn't what I normally like to do, but because I've done it, now I just want to do it. And um, this was something that I, I can say I struggled with for a long time. And people will look at me crazy because I will always say, you know, that when we would have like, you know, deep conversations with my friends or family members and stuff. And I would always say that, you know, there's a lot of things that I just, it's not that I'm not comfortable doing it. I am comfortable doing it, but I know that because of the calling that I have on my life that I can't do and go certain places. I can't be in certain environments. And to be honest, as a young adult, as a teen, that kind of sucked because you want to be able to feel like you can live your life freely. But I, a lot of times when I did step out of my zone and went out to other places, I got um, just convicted, you know, of doing or going somewhere that I knew that I shouldn't have been going or shouldn't have been doing. And so um, you look at other people's situation and you're like, well, they're doing it. Why can't I do it? And it's like, but you know better. You know, you, when you know better, you do better because knowledge is power. And to know better and not do it is just a call of disobedience. Um, and we have to be obedient to what it is that God has called us to do. Of course, we're not going to always be obedient. I'm not going to sit here and say that 24-7. I'm just obedient in the word of God, just watching and making sure that everything I do checks the boxes for him. Because then that will be me saying that I'm perfect and I'm not perfect. And then it will also be a lie. <laughs> um but that's just the reality of that. Um, of course, we do things that we know is not good. We know that we shouldn't do it. And the best thing that you can do in that kind of situation is just kind of just come back to God and ask for forgiveness and let him know that, you know, yes, I did know that I shouldn't have done that. I let myself astray. And to make sure that you don't continuously lead yourself astray on that same path. Because once you, the further you go out, the more steps you take farther away, the farther you get. So, the harder it is to pull yourself back on the right track. The harder it is to remind yourself that I am ordained. I am called to a different walk or path from my sister or my brother in Christ or my friends. And I can't go down this path. If they go left, God's telling me to go right. And I go left, then I'm backtracking because I went the way that I thought I was, or I knew I wasn't supposed to go, but because they're going in that door, looks better than the right door, but even though the right door was for me, I missed that. So now here I am years later, coming back around to something that could have came to me in the beginning, but because I was disobedient and um, I did things the way I chose to do them, now here I am a year back later into life when I could have been a year ahead. And of course, at the end of the day, we don't think about it like that because we all know that, you know, our life is planned out. Whatever is going to happen is already planned. God knows our moves, but we don't. So sometimes we sit here and we think like, was that the right decision? Should I have done that? But in reality, God knew that we were going to make a mistake. God knew that we were going to mess up. And so in that moment, you have to just, again, be willing to pull yourself back and close the gap between you and God, you know, and just make sure that everything that you're doing um, as much as possible is lined up with your calling over your life because there will be mountains that get in front of you. There will be obstacles and hurdles that you're going to have to go through. And like I said, for me right now, my biggest hurdle and my biggest mountain that has been overcoming me for the last six or seven months is just fear. Fear has caused so many things in my life to just go so many different ways. And it, I'm frustrated because of this mountain, because this is a mountain that I've dealt with pretty much all my life. Um, I don't take chances on a lot of things because I'm afraid of the outcome. I'm an overthinker. I overanalyze and I overlook a lot of things or not overlook, but I detail a lot of things that I see and I play out. What if I do this? What if I do that? Or what if I just stay in my comfort? And so in that, it's a bad thing because you weigh the good and bad, but the bad always outweighs the good. Even though the good could possibly be something that will happen, I don't look at it that way. I look at the bad. I look at what if the bad happens and the good never happens. So I miss out on doing a lot of things that God led me to do. I miss out on doing things out of my comfort zone. A lot of times I stay in my comfort zone because of that fear. And so, again, this morning I woke up and I just felt like 
fear had overtaken me. Seriously, um, I've had so many health issues within the last five to six months, as I've been telling you guys over the last couple of episodes. I've had uh, so many hurdles in the last episode. If you have not heard the last episode, pause this and go back. Episode 42 um, forgive about forgiveness. Um, I talk about how my mom did something that was just absurd. (laughs) And in that moment, I wanted to revert back to the old me. I wanted to just walk in unforgiveness, but I know that that's not the way that I'm supposed to walk because I remember what I'm praying for. And that's another thing that I want to talk about on here today too, is just to remember, you know, what you're asking God to do. Remember what you're praying for, because Remembering your prayers and when something happens, it matters, you guys. It really does. Because in that situation, um, again, if you haven't heard that episode, please go back. Because I'm not going to tell you everything that happened about it. So, um, (laughs) but if you um, heard that episode, you heard me talk about, you know, the situation that happened with me and my mom. And um, in that moment, it was easy for me to revert back to just being the old Jasmine. The isolating, cutting off, blocking ignorant person that I can be and easily I may have gotten this mindset maybe I would say about five minutes and once I was reminded once the conversation kind of shifted and I was reminded of what was going on here it was an attack um on my faith it was attack on if I really believe what I prayed for and what God asked what I asked God to do in my life um, that morning I got up and I prayed and I asked God to open my heart to forgiveness to people that I felt didn't wasn't deserving of forgiveness from me. Um, to not make people go through hurdles and work off the rest of their life, proving to me that I can trust them because God doesn't do that with us. Um, and once I realized what was going on, it got easier for me to laugh about it. But to be honest, in that moment, I was pissed. I was frustrated. I was upset. And I wanted to literally just revert back to what was comfortable, which was not dealing with it isolating, cutting her off. And to be honest, I'm not going to say I didn't cut my mom off. Um, I'm distancing myself and dealing with her on a way that I can deal with. And just be, people feel like just because, you know, your family, your friends, oh, you know, you have to deal with them. I don't have to deal with nothing. God didn't put me in this world to continuously keep going over the same hurt, over the same thing. And again, we're all different. And I have to be able to accept that my mom is different from me. And the way that I look at life, she doesn't look at it that way. And the way that I deal with situations, she doesn't deal with them that way. So when I was reminded of this, I reminded myself that I am different. I can't continuously walk in this unforgiveness because God is calling me to forgive. God is calling me to let go. I'm asking for God to let me to let go. And in order for me to do that, I have to step outside of my comfort zone and do something that seems <laughs> unachievable, you guys. Um, to be real with you, that's how I felt. I felt like, you know, and I literally had, a, I, the next day I left, I drove, and I was just talking to God, and I said, you know, how can how can I be so willing to forgive a person that does stuff intentionally to hurt me, to cause harm to me, to cause stress to me? Again, I've told you guys I have a lot of issues health issues going on right now so that was just added stress um I recently was in the hospital um last week and I went back to the hospital this week in there for two days and it was because this week I was in there for stress um just a lot of stress a lot of issues in my heart um so now it's just like you can't allow people to kill you literally you can't allow people to kill you because stress will kill you added stress will kill you and being fearful, that will kill you too. Um, and I think all of those things and everything that's going on in my life right now combined together was just, whew, <laughs> okay, it's just a lot. But um, I realized that, you know, a couple of months ago that God reminded me that you're ordained, Jasmine, like you, you are called for this. I've made your life detail is specifically planned for you because I know what you can handle. I know what you can go through. So if you're asking me this, you're believing that you can do it, you can do it. And you have to realize that um I have some people that's just like, oh no, nah, I would have snapped on my mama. Da, da, da. And to be real, that was the old me. Like not trying to be disrespectful, but just speaking from honesty. I'm eagerly angered sometimes. And like I said, it's because of my unforgiveness. It's because of my hurt. It's because of things that have happened with my mom. This isn't the first time she's done something like that intentionally. We've not had a good relationship since 
me being in middle school. And so here I am trying to bridge that gap. And you can't work on a relationship one side. It takes two people to be in a relationship. And so I realized that she doesn't want the relationship that I want. So I I accepted that. And so it's it's harder when you have people like, oh, no, nah, she did what? I can't believe she did that to you. I would have done that. And in my mind, I'm thinking I would have done that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have went there too. But because I realized that I'm called right now, specifically right now, to be called into a different place. Like I said, this is a year of growing for me. 2020 has through some hurdles, not only to me, but to everybody. I can honestly say everybody has been going through a lot in 2020. 2020 has been stressful, but yet necessary. I keep saying that because a lot of people are ready to get into the new year. They're ready to start a new path. But I tell you, do not mistake what's a blessing in front of you for something that's meant to harm you. This year is meant to build us. This year is meant to mold us into the person, the woman, the man that God has called us to be. And for me, I can honestly say it's it's harder because when you know that you have to do better, you have to respond differently to the way that people react. You can't control other people, but you can only control you. So you can't allow people to get you in a situation where you're continuously disobeying God, you're continuously going against your character, and you're continuously walking out of what you're praying for. Because the more you do that, the more it's going to take you to get through your obstacle. The more that mountain is going to continue to feel like it's growing, even though you can move it. Even though that situation to me, I felt hurt. I felt betrayed. I had community. And here I am trying to work on my communication and have an open heart, not be so easy to not trust again. And here I am in a situation where God is asking me to do the very things that I'm working on doing, but I'm faced with a situation where that seems inevitable. That seems impossible. How can I literally sit up here and trust this lady again when she did the exact thing I asked her not to do? When I've communicated and I've done my part. And again, that's just another lesson. You can't control how people respond. You can't control what people are going to do. So in that moment, you have to control yourself. And to be real, like I said, again, about five minutes, I let myself go because I was going to go there with her. And then I was reminded. I had to call. It took me like three or four calls to get to the right person to say the right thing at the right time because I literally was about to go back there. I was going to go back to middle school (laughs) when my mom hurt me from day one. I was going to list it out and let her know that this is just another one of those moments. You're not going to change. You don't care. You're disrespectful. I try to respect you. Why? Why am I doing that? For what? She doesn't care. She literally showed that she does not care. So what am I going to continuously sit out here and try to force someone to care for? I'm not doing that. And so, um, again, it's, it's hard. You guys, it's really hard. Um, it's just, (laughs) I'm telling you, you have to be, you really have to be in the mindset of willing to be open. You have to trust and believe that what you're praying to God is actually what you believe. Because let me tell you, God will test you. You will be tempted and there will be attacks from the enemy. But the difference is you will never know which one is which at that time. You won't know if it was an attack. And people give the devil too much credit. I'm going to just say that. I've said that in previous episodes. But people give the devil too much credit. They're like, oh, the devil attacking me. He came and now I'm just, oh, uh, I'm frustrated. I'm pissed. He done pissed me off. But... In the end, when you look back over, there's a lot of times I've said that. I'm like, oh, the devil busy today. He ain't going to get me upset. Well, naturally, he did get me upset. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I stepped out into that old Jasmine, and he won. And then I learned that it wasn't an attack from an enemy. What am I saying? Anemone, anemone, anemone. What is that from, Nemo? (laughs) But anyways, um, it wasn't an attack from the enemy. It was a test from God. It was temptation being tempted from the devil you know what i'm saying because you you have to realize when you when you realize your potential man that thing irks the devil okay the devil gets upset when you grow more and more into yourself but god also wants to make sure where your heart is it's all about your heart where is your heart you're praying this and i know you you're saying it i believe you but now i want to put you to the test i want to make sure that what you're praying for you're ready for because sometimes we pray for things and we ask for things and we're not ready for them um just like a couple months ago um god had been putting on my heart to start budgeting and saving better and i talked about like just walking and being obedient and that may seem small, but, you know, God had been pushing me to do that for a while. And I've been doing it the whole year, but I haven't been successful with being able to save. 
And so about six months ago, I started another savings plan. And I can honestly say I'm very proud of myself. I have stuck to my plan. I've paid my tithes all this year. I'm very excited about that because that has been something that I've struggled with for a long time. And so I'm thankful now, six months later, because I followed the plan that God had for me. I answered the call to yes, I will budget better. I will save and look at my finances and figure out where my money is going. Because now I have, um, I'm on FMLA for my asthma and my health issues. And this week alone, I had three days off from work unpaid. Last week, I had two days off from work unpaid. But I'm not stressing about it because why? I have money in my savings account. And I thank God for that because that's not me doing that. That was God. God called me to be a great steward over my finances six months ago. And because of my calling and my yes to God then, realizing that I'm different. I can't just be out here continuously swiping my card. I can't continuously be out here spending willingly money that I don't have when I need to save. Because I don't know what the future holds, but God does. So if God has been asking you to do something and God has been tugging on your heart for you to do something, I don't care what if it's to call somebody pray for somebody, reach out to somebody, clean your house, budget your finances, get you a new car, keep up with the things. You have to honestly, before God will renew you, you have to be able to do and steward good over what you already have. If you're looking to buy a house, take care of your apartment. Treat it like it is a house. Take care of what you already have. If you're looking to get a new car, you got a cash car and you're trying to get a better car, take care of that car. Get your oil changes done. Get your brakes done. Check your um, lights. Make sure the car on the inside looks nice. Nice. Make sure that you're being a good steward over what God already gave you because then he knows when it's time for you to increase, when it's time for you to gain more, you know what to do with it. Sometimes we get more and we lose it because we don't understand how to take care of it. We pray for it, we ask for it, but then we get it and we lose it because we don't understand or we mistreat it. And then we have to end up getting something new because we beat that thing down. And a lot of people don't realize that. I know that that's something small, but it means a lot. I'm telling you, read the word. Be a good steward over what you already have. Because when God increases, he wants to know that you can handle increase. And so I'm very thankful, um, like I said, because child, I I used to be really, really good with saving. When I moved to Atlanta, I saved um, $6,000 within two months. I was very grateful for that. Now, (laughs) now being real, I just, ooh, I don't know. I can't do it. And so for me to get where I am with my money financially at this very moment, I'm very thankful. I don't have like thousands in the bank yet, but my goal is to save 5,000 by March. We're in November. So fingers crossed, I'm praying, budgeting. I know that things will happen. I'm trying to pay off my car um, because I want to go ahead and get rid of that bill. You know, it's just a lot of things that I'm doing. So in order for me to do that and be in a better financial situation, I have to be a great steward over my money so that if I need to put such and such down to pay off my car i can say well let me go to my savings and let me do that so i can just eliminate this bill right here and right there let's just stop saving and let's pay off this because the money that i'm paying towards this car i'm paying it off so now the money that i was paying for my car note i can put that in my savings and so i'm very grateful for god being so stern and pulling on my heart to budget because in the beginning i was just like god i mean i always budget like what you saying i need to budget i always i got a budget like $20 $20 in check. <laughs> and so now I put 10% in my savings account. And then I have this $5,000 chart. I mark off. I put two. There's like a whole bunch of slots that add up to 5000 So I do two slots per check because I get paid twice a month. And so that goes to one account. And then the 10% goes to another. So I give my 10% back to God. I give 10% to myself. And then I save two boxes from the 5000 So that's what I've been doing for the last six months. And I'm very proud of myself. I've had to go in my savings account to cover money for the times that I've been at the doctor. But I'm thankful that I'm able to do that because I can't count the times that I've had to go and ask people, hey, can I borrow this till I get paid? Hey, can I borrow this to put gas in my car? Hey, can I borrow this to get food? And now God has called me and stewarded me to a better stewardship position. I've elevated, I've graduated (laughs) um, on stewarding to be better to depend on God. I know not myself, but God, because that was not me. That was God. And so a lot of times you have to literally, and you will be tempted. Let me tell you, because you will be tempted. I'm telling you, people will go out and they'll swipe their car. And then you have to remember I'm different. I can't do this. God told me to budget my money. I got the money, but is it okay for me to do this? And am I able or going to be able to put this money back if I need to? 
So, um, I think that, I mean, to you, that might be like, oh, girl, that's just so small. But to me, it's big because here I am six months later. I didn't know that I was going to be having days where I'm off consecutively two to three days a week, not getting paid. But it doesn't hurt me. Why? Because I listened to what God told me to do. It took me some time. Like I said, I've always been able to save. But God was talking on me for the last seven, eight months. Save, Jasmine. You need to budget. You need to do this. And I started it and I stopped and I started it and I stopped and I started it and I stopped. And then six months ago, I got serious with myself because I felt like God was being serious with me. And I started budgeting. And so a lot of people will try to talk you out of what it is that God is tugging on you to do. But it's because they don't understand what God is taking you. They don't understand what God is doing in your life. You don't even understand what, let me be real. I didn't understand why God was tugging on me to budget. But now here I am six months later and I'm thankful that God did tug on my heart the way he did. Because if had he not done that, I would have been sitting here missing two and $300 from my paycheck because I've been out five days within the last two weeks. And that's on one paycheck. So you tell me how that add up. How I'm supposed to pay my bills? I got rent. I got a car note. I got car insurance. I got a light bill. I got a phone bill. I got a Wi-Fi. How am I going to pay my bills if I don't have any money to rely on? And you can't always depend on other people because other people may be going through their own situation. And even though they may be willing to give it to you, do they financially have it? And so it's it's a hard situation, but... You have to be willing to understand. I am a conqueror. I will conquer this situation because I am different. I will walk into the calling that God has over my life because he's called me higher. And I'm going to move this mountain with a mustard seed of faith because I believe in what God believes in me. And that may sound easy, (laughs) but like I said this morning, I woke up and that was not my mantra. Okay. That is not what I was saying. And so I listened to the word and I was like, God, like this is good. Like I needed this word and I know somebody else needs it. Because you have to get serious about being different. Like, I know, and it's crazy because we, in our minds, we know, like, we say it all the time. I'm different. I'm not you. I don't handle things the way you handle them. I can't go about stuff the way you go about them. Good. You know that. So why aren't you doing and being that different person that God has called you to be? Why are you trying to be Sally or Bob or Robert? Why are you trying to be him or her when you can be you? And there's nothing wrong with that. And... Um, like I said, in middle school and high school and stuff, I struggled with this, y'all. I struggled with it. When my friends was dating and doing all this stuff, I was just like, I wasn't into it. But I was just like, why? Why am I not interested in doing this stuff that normal teenagers and normal young adults do? And as I got older, as I got into high school, when I lost my dad, well, after high school, actually, um, I realized that, Jasmine, you're different. You're walking on a different walk from other people. And people will always mistake me not being able to do those things as, oh, you're judging us or you feel like you're better than us. No, I don't feel like I'm better than y'all. To be honest, in this very moment, I feel like I'm little because you guys get to go do all these things and not be convicted the next minute. But here I am trying to stay on the same, the right path, because I know that at at that time I wanted to do so much with my life. And one mistake or one thing that I done, I could have did back then could have stopped me from going where God was trying to take me. And I realized that. And so when you realize where God is trying to take you, you understand why you're ordained and called to be different. And a lot of people don't. Are you loving this episode? Great. Don't forget to leave your feedback by rating and leaving a review on Apple iTunes. Also, don't forget to subscribe anywhere, wherever you're listening to this podcast. And make sure that you follow us on Instagram to keep up in the know of what's going on with the podcast. Okay, let's get back to the episode. And I know this is kind of lengthy, so (laughs) I'm going to try to wrap it up. But um, I just want you guys to seriously know, you know, what difference means for you. Because what difference means for me doesn't mean the same thing for you. And again, we in our minds, we know this, but we don't really think about it when it comes to our life situation um that's like I have many friends that have wonderful businesses they're very successful in their businesses I've gone through doing so many things I went I used to do hair I went to school for cosmetology in high school I um I didn't get my license because that's not what I wanted to do but I'm really good at doing hair I still am very good at doing hair but I realized that that wasn't the call that God had on my life just because I have that talent doesn't mean that God is calling me to use that talent and the only reason I really took up doing hair is because 
my mom did hair. Uh, my aunties went to school for doing hair and nails and my grandma pushed me to do that and so that's what I took up and when I got out of high school and when I didn't get my license I was just like this isn't what I want to do yeah I'm really good at doing hair like I said to this day I can still do hair um, but that's not where my passion is that's not where my heart is that's somebody else's passion um, that was kind of pushed on me and I kind of just was like okay whatever and so um I couldn't really get my life together after graduating, um, after losing my dad. I just really didn't know what to do. I was lost. Um, It was hard for me to really find a good job. I was in college, but I failed out of college when he died. So um, I felt like most of my classes, I was trying to catch up. I think I felt like, ended up feeling like three classes after, or two two or three classes. Um, I couldn't really make up that time. I was going to school, I was, you know, doing my work, but it's just, my mind, my focus wasn't there. And so I went back and decided I was going to study to get my license because I was like, hey, this is something that I'm good at. I can make really good money doing this and I can create a lifestyle for myself. And I never wanted to be a beautician, but I wanted to own a beauty salon. I always know that God called me to be a, a business owner. And so I, de- I don't want to be a cosmetologist, but if I had to, that's what I was willing to do. And so after studying and doing all that hard work, and I was like, Jasmine, why are you putting yourself through this? You know, why are you doing this? You don't even want to do hair. You're good at it, but you don't want to do hair. <laughs> why are you going to school? Why are you trying to go back and take a test, spend money, stress yourself out about something that you don't even want to do? Yeah, you're good. You're great at it. You you do good. But why are you doing this? And I realized it was because, like I said, this is what everybody else is doing. My best friend um, at the time, she does hair to this day. She does it very well. Wigs everything and so she was helping me with it um or whatever because you know she believes she's like you want to do this we can do it I can help you um get your license or whatever and then I told her I was like you know what this is not what I want to do you know you're good at it I'm good at it but I don't this is not where God has called me to be you know um and at the time it wasn't really a matter of this isn't where God called me to be this it was a this is not where you're supposed to be kind of thing because I knew that this wasn't what I woke up every morning passionate about and so after I did hair, um, what did I do? I wanted to study to get my real estate license. I was actually studying to get my series six. And in the middle of studying to get my series six, I was like, nope, this isn't it either. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do real estate. And I really am still passionate about real estate, but I don't know if that's what God has called me to be. Um, because I prayed about it and God said that he wanted me to com- communicate to people. He wants me to speak through what I've been through. And sometimes I sit here and I say, well, how is that going to help somebody? (laughs) Like sometimes I literally sit here and I think I'm just literally ranting, talking and blabbing on. And then something happens or somebody reaches out to me and says, I listened to your episode and I'm just so thankful because this is exactly what I needed. Or this is something that I've been going through for so many years and I never had a breakthrough (laughs) Um, as this, I never got this kind of breakdown. And so, um, real estate is just like on the back end. Cause I'm like financially money wise, I think I would do ex phenomenally well, but it's not even about the money for me. It's about doing something that I wake up every morning. Thankful to do. Um, I stopped doing real estate. I let people talk me out of that, but I really wanted to do it. And then I moved to Atlanta and I started to get my, um, interior design. I did that. Um, for a while. And again, I'm really good at decorating. I love it. Can still do it. But I feel like that's not where my heart was. That's not what God called me to do. At this point, it was like, that's not what God called me to do. I prayed about it. I deleted my Instagram. I deleted my website. I took down all my contact information. I closed my um business for my <laughs> design solutions business. And I started doing my podcasting. Um, And that's where I've been ever since. Um. And like I said, at times, I'm just like, it sucks because you see all these people doing all these things, making so much money, being so successful. But I realized that it's not about success is so it's defined differently, just like you're different and I'm different from you. Success for me is not success for you. Success for you may be money. Success for you may be being known. Success for you may be just doing something for a bunch of years that you like success for you may not be being an entrepreneur it may be working for somebody else corporation for years but success for me is just making sure that my calling my what I do 
makes God happy. And not only makes God happy, but makes me happy. And so, um, people look at it and it's like, oh, you can do this. You can be so great at it. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, you right. I can do good that like the, uh, not too long ago. I started, I thought about getting my braiding license to do braids because I'm like people charging two and $300 for braids. I know how to do those. I can do those in my sleep. I can be making $200 a day on somebody's head or more, <laughs> you know, five times two equals what? <laughs> like I could be literally making money here, putting it in my savings, getting financially ahead. But that's not what God called me to do. And again, it sucks because I realize that I'm different. I can't do what everybody else is doing because I'm not going where everybody else is going. We're all going our own way. And to know that is a greater knowledge than anything because once you know that, you'll be you'll be content with where you're going. You'll be content with where you're at. Does it have its moments? Heck yes. There's moments where I get so upset. I'm like, all my friends or friends that I know have businesses that have shot off, that have took off. And here I am still trying to figure out, okay, God, I know what you want me to do, but how do you want me to do it? How do you want me to be successful in what I'm doing? And sometimes I realize that God is telling me, like, you're already being successful. Like, Jasmine, you're sitting here, Open it up, something that you normally don't do <laughs> about things that have happened to you over years. Talking literally about things that personally happened to you in your life, to other people, to some people you don't even know. That's courageous. That's success because you don't normally do. If I was in the room sitting around with you guys and you guys were just sitting here telling me stuff that happened to you, I if I didn't feel compelled or comfortable with speaking on it, I would not be doing this. And to know that God uses that, (laughs) like he uses that and uses it to help other people realize that you aren't by yourself. And that was the whole, uh, the whole point behind this podcast is to help you understand that you're not walking on this walk alone because I'm definitely there with you. And there's somebody else there with you too. But in times when you're going through stuff, you feel so alone. You feel like you don't have nobody, literally. Going through what I'm going through right now, I feel so alone. I'm emotional. Sometimes I sit here and I'm just like, I feel like everybody has left me. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole thing with my mom, I was trying to work out with her. And it's just like, I feel like you just abandoned me. Like, I can't be there like that with you because of the way you are. And that sucks because I have friends and family that have such good relationships with their mom. And I want that. But I'm different. (laughs) And sometimes being different isn't easy. I'm just going to say that. Because people look at me and they say, God, you're so strong. You know, you've bared a lot. You've been through a lot. But you always overcome. How do you do that? I don't know. (laughs) For real, though. Like, I don't know. (laughs) But I know that, you know, I'm not going to say I don't know. I do know. I keep going. I used to be a person that used to sit around in my misery and have pity parties for myself. But now as I've gotten older, I realized that I don't have time to sit here and feel sorry for myself. I've already lost out on years losing my dad. That was just the biggest wake up call. I lost three years, four years of my life because I couldn't find me. I didn't know who I was. And I lost everything. I lost my apartment. I lost my car. I literally moved from with family to family. And then that was the point where I decided to make a decision to take care of me and do what I had to do to get on my feet. And I promised myself that I would never put myself back in situations that would have me back where I used to be, because that's not who I am. That's who I used to be. And when you make that declaration, sometimes you have to do things and Go through obstacles that you ain't even see coming, that you don't want to go through, but you have to do it to get where you're going. And I try to tell people this all the time. Sometimes you got to do things that you don't want to do. I've had to work jobs. When I moved back to Atlanta, I had to move back in with my best friend. Like I said, I told myself I was not staying with nobody else. But I knew God had called me to come back to Jacksonville, so I did that. I I was obedient. And you think that being obedient, God's just going to pave the way. Like, oh, next day you're going to have this. God's going to bless you with that. No, it don't work like that. You still got to work. Yeah, you're obedient. He sees that. Don't worry. It's going to pay off in the long run. But right now, you still got to be obedient. You got to do what God is telling you to do. So I moved back, put my stuff back in storage, moved in with my best friend. After I realized that, Jasmine, 
this is temporary. God put you here temporarily. He didn't put you here to get comfortable. And to be honest, in that situation, when I was living with her, I was very uncomfortable because that's that's not where I wanted to be. I was thankful. I was grateful because she extended her home to me, but I was very uncomfortable. And God said, why are you uncomfortable? Because I didn't make this for you to be permanent. I told you to be here temporarily. Get up and do what I told you to do. So I started looking for jobs. I worked two and three jobs. And I worked racetrack overnight. I worked accounting during the day. And then I kept praying and I believed. And I remember I um I worked one day at Haverty's. And let me tell y'all, this was the best one day of my life. I literally, I'm not even going to go into it because like I said, I know that this episode is already linked and I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But I think I talk about it in one of my episodes. I'm going to have to play it back and put it down below but just a small recap I worked one day at Haverty's and I was talking to this lady and um we were talking about the job and da, 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 how she didn't like it whatever and so um we were talking about Bank of America she's like oh my son is a VP of Bank of America he's gonna get me in there da, 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 da. and in my head I'm thinking well if your son is a VP of Bank of America he's been there for years why haven't you got on yet like you know what I'm saying that was just my thought but I'm like okay and I saw her I was like you know that's why I aspired to be one day as well when I was in Atlanta I really wanted to work at Bank of America because I feel like that would help me financially reality and moved to Atlanta and I never got on that Bank of America. They started contacting me after I moved back to Jacksonville and I was contemplating on moving back to Atlanta because I'm like, okay, they they offering me jobs or not offering me jobs, but they're trying to do interviews and I'm in Jacksonville. Should I still do the interviews? I can always move back to Atlanta. And God was like, nope. <laughs> nope, you're going to stay your behind right here in Jacksonville or the Florida. You ain't going back to no Georgia. <laughs> and that hurt because I'm like, bro, I'm different. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though these things are happening to me, I can't do it. And I told her, I said, but you know what? I'm here. I'm back. And I said, one day I'm going to get my foot in that door. And when I get there, I'm going to know that this was meant for me. And let me tell y'all, two, three months later, what happened? I got it. um, I was talking to my sister about my career and I was frustrated because I'm living with my best friend. I'm trying to find a better job so that I can move out on my own. And in the middle of the night, I woke up, my sister texted me a link. She's like, here, you know, apply for this. Da, da, da. I told my mentor about you. Put in your application. Let me know when you do it. I'm like, okay, cool. I wake up. It's Bank of America. Literally, it's Bank of America. And so I put in the application. Maybe like a month. I still hadn't heard anything. No interview, no nothing. So my sister texted me and was like, hey, do you know, did somebody contact you about an interview? And I was like, no. I just kind of gave up on it. She was like, no, my mentor, my mentor is asking me. She's going to push her um, thing through. That next week, I got a call for it. I did an interview. Uh, a couple more weeks been, went by. Still hadn't heard anything. I'm like, dang, I suck. I didn't get a job. And so... uh my sister was like, oh, my, my mentor was like, you know, they, they're looking into your information. You know, your interview went great. I'm like, okay. And so uh, I got a call maybe that next week about a job offer. And I was ecstatic, you guys. I was really ecstatic. I'm like, bruh, this is literally the moment I've waited for um, for the last two years. I've been trying to get on that Bank of America in Atlanta. And it just didn't happen. And I didn't understand why. I'm like, bruh, I'm good. I have worked in the bank where I used to work at Citibank. I'm like, I can do this. I know that this will financially prepare me and put me where I need to be. And let me tell you guys that it has done just that. Like I said, I'm able to save now, able to steward good over my money. But what took that for it to happen was my faith. Even though I hadn't got there yet. I moved to Atlanta in 2017. Been trying to get on there from 2017 to 2018. Never happened. Got on in 2019, still there, and now I'm actually going into a new position. So I've been there for a year, and I'm getting ready to go into another position on December 7th. Nobody but God, man. And the crazy thing about the new position is, I pray, I got up, I pray, and I say, you know what, God? I can't do this department no more. I love what I do, but I'm uncomfortable. And I know that when God calls me to be uncomfortable, it's, it, he's calling me to move. And I really don't think, to be honest, that I'm going to be at this company that much longer, maybe like a few years, because God is going to push me out to do my own thing. But in the meantime, I have to be a good steward of what I have, you guys, because in order for me to do my own thing and be successful at it, I have to be good at what I'm doing now. Yeah, I'm not working for myself 100%, but when I do, I can handle it because God, I'm being a good steward of what I have now. And that's real, man. That's real. Like, I'm excited just thinking about it. But um, I got up that morning, and I'm going to close with this, but... I got up this that morning. I prayed and I was like, God, I can't do this. I love this department. I love my my team. 
Um, but just the organization since we've been home, it's stressful. It's stressing me, you know. Um, I just, I can't do this. I said, God, I need you to paint a, a path for me. I need you to open my career. Where am I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to be doing? And, you know, I told him, I said, wherever you show me, wherever you lead me, God, I trust you. And I said, amen. Literally, you guys, I text one of my um, co-workers and I was like, hey, I'm just checking in on you. Da, da, da. And I log into my computer and I see that she sent me an email. And she's like, girl, I just emailed you. And I'm like, oh, for real? I was like, oh, I see it. I open email. It's a list of jobs. So I look at one. I apply for one. I get an interview the next day. I mean, not an interview, but the recruiter reaches out to me that same day. But I had already left for the day. So the next day, I reached out back to her. We set up an interview. I did my interview last week. Um, and I was kind of hesitant about it. I was like, I feel like I did good, but I don't know if I got the position because everybody else is qualified. I don't have experience in that department. And um, when I was in the hospital on Wednesday getting ready to leave, I got a call from the recruiter that they wanted me. They're interested in me and they hope that I was interested in them. And at first I wasn't going to take it, you guys. Um, I wasn't going to take it, but I ended up accepting the offer on Friday. Um, no, I ended up accepting the offer on Thursday. Yeah, because that's how I would let her know. I ended up accepting the offer on Thursday um, because the hours in the, the hours is fine. The days was just like, eh, if it's for me. But I realized that I remember what I prayed for. And that's what I was talking about earlier. You have to remember what you pray for. I pray for God to open my career path. And me, sorry, you guys, my last one got cut off. But anyways, I don't know where I stopped. Um, I got an email with, as soon as I said amen, I got an email with five different jobs. I applied for one, got offered one. It wasn't the one that I wanted, but I remember what I prayed for. I told God to send me on a different career path, a path for me. I'm already work. I'm working Monday through Friday, but this schedule is not a Monday. This is... It's not a Monday through Friday. It's a Sunday through Thursday. But I'm off Friday and Saturday. But I still get off early. And so I was kind of hesitant about accepting the job offer. But then I remember what I prayed for. And I remember what I asked God to do. And I remember what I told him. And I remember how I told him that I was frustrated with this department. I'm ready to move. I feel complacent. I feel stagnant. I'm uncomfortable. So God, when you're calling me to uncomfortness, you're calling me to move. So I trust that this is time for me to move. And God is allowing you to move. So for you to sit here and decline God's promotion. What does that say about what you prayed? How bad do you want that? How bad do you trust that God has you? And so I talked it over with my cousin and my auntie and my few, a few friends about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and accept it. And I accepted it. And I'm excited. I'm nervous. <laughs> because like I said, I don't have experience in this apartment. But I trust God. I don't trust my department. I don't trust me. I trust God. I trust that God will excel me in this position and it will lead me exactly where I'm supposed to be. And that's just what I want to tell you guys. Remember, you're a conqueror, man. Whatever's in front of you, you can move that thing. My fear, it's going to move because I have faith and I have to continue to have faith and I want you to have faith and I want you to be a conqueror and remember that you can't do the things, even if you're trying to do the same thing, you can have two people in the same job, but their paths are going to look totally different. One person may get paid more. One person may do more and more. Do, one person may be paid less and do less, or one person may make more and do less. And it may seem unfair, but then you have to remember that I'm different. God has placed this workload on me or this pay on me or this work schedule on me because I can handle it. And God is testing my heart. He wants to know how I'm going to steward over what he's already given me. So, man, I want y'all to remember that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out. I really appreciate you guys listening in. I love you so much. Remember to keep shining as the gems you are because God sees us perfectly, even though we're imperfect. I love you. Bye. I'll see you on the next episode.